Hello there and welcome back. In today's lecture, we're going to be talking about trig integrals and we're also going to carry over to lecture four as well and also talk about trig integrals. So I want to bring to your attention this box of formulas. Um, these are absolutely crucial to know to make the integrals in this section and the next section easier. So I've listed this all in a nice place for you right here. I left a little bit of space because we're going to be proving a couple more helpful formulas um, in lecture four. But for now, I want you to just know these. The first three you're probably familiar with from your trig class, these are the, are the Pythagorean identities. So we have sine squared plus cosine squared is one, tangent squared plus one is secant squared, and cotangent squared plus one is cosecant squared. Over here, these are called reduction formulas. So if you have sine squared or cosine squared, this is how to effectively lower them to um, a first power trig function. So knowing these will be helpful. And then in some cases, knowing these product formulas will also be helpful. So I'm going to keep this here for us as we work through all of our examples uh, today. All right, let's start with our first example. So the first example is going to be the integral of cosine to the third power. So these are called trig integrals because all the integrals we're going to be doing in the next few lectures only have trig functions um, inside the integrand. So what can we do with something like this? Well, we don't exactly have a rule to go backwards from cos to cosine um, cubed. But what I can do here is I can split this up. So this is equal to cosine of x times cosine squared x. And then I can very cleverly use one of my formulas off to the right. So it's again, it's crucial that you know these. This is probably the most popular one we use. It's this right here. If you rearrange this first formula, you'll get that cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. And that's usually what we use in these problems. But rearranging this first formula gives you this. So instead of cosine squared, I'm going to put 1 minus sine squared, just like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something we're already familiar with. I'm going to make a u substitution. So if I were to let u be sine of x, then du is going to be cosine of x dx. And then let's see what happens to our integral now. So we have the integral. This is 1 minus u squared, because I've called sine u. And du is cosine of x dx. So this cosine of x dx gets replaced with du. And now, this is easier to integrate. If I integrate 1, I get u. And if I integrate u squared, I get u cubed over 3 plus c. And then I can plug back in for u. So I called u sine of x. So all of these u's, I'm going to plug in sine of x. And then that is my answer. So for this, um, I had an odd power for cosine. So what I did is I, I basically left one cosine here by itself. And then I pulled out the rest of them. And I turned them into sines. So that was the strategy for this one. Let's take a look at another example. So this is the integral of sine to the fifth of x cosine squared dx. So I'm going to be doing something with this first formula again. The sine and the cosine, they kind of go together because one is the derivative of the other. So um, these are often paired together. What do I do, though, if I have two choices? Well, let me help guide your choice. So in general, we want to factor out a sine of x or cosine of x if the corresponding power, say, um, cosine to the m of x or sine to the n of x is odd. So what I mean is I want m or n to be odd. So if you can see that one of 
the two powers is odd, then the strategy is you're going to remove one of them. So here's what I mean in this case. Sine to the fifth is odd. So I'm going to have sine to the fourth, cosine squared, and then that remaining sine of x, I'm going to write that off to the side. So this is equal to the original thing. Now what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to replace these sines with cosines. So first what I'm going to remind you of is that sine to the fourth is sine squared squared. <laughs> And I'm just going to rewrite the rest of these like this. And then instead of sine squared, the formula here, if I rearrange it, sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. So I get 1 minus cosine squared squared. I have cosine squared sine of x dx. And now here is a great point for me to do my u substitution. So if I say u is equal to cosine, that means du is equal to negative sine of x dx. And how does that look now? I get a negative sign in front because I have a negative here. I get 1 minus u squared, because cosine is u. I square that. I have another u squared right here. And then this sine of x dx gets replaced by du. Now, I can keep going with this. So this is negative. If I square this and multiply it by itself, I would FOIL. So I get 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth. So that's what happens if I square this. I still have this u squared off to the side. And then for this, I get, if I distribute this u squared to everything, I get u squared minus 2u to the fourth plus u to the sixth du. And then I just need to remember that I need to distribute this negative sign to everything. So I get the integral of negative u squared plus 2u to the fourth minus u to the sixth du. And now I'm going to go ahead and integrate that. So I, I think I have enough room right there. So this is going to be negative u to the third over 3 plus u to the fifth 2 over 5 minus u to the 7 over 7 plus c. And then for my final answer, all you do is you replace all of these u's with cosine. So let me just do that over here. So my final answer will be right here. All I'm doing is for every single one of these u's, I'm going to put a cosine in its place. So I'd have cosine to the third over 3 here. 2, this is cosine to the fifth over 5. And then minus cosine to the seventh plus c. So this is my final answer after I just substitute back into here. So what you really want to see with these sine-cosine integrals is you want one of those powers to be odd. And if at least one of them is odd, you can do this process where you remove one of them and then turn the other one into uh, the other trig function. So this process works for sine and cosine integrals. The thing is, though, they're not always going to have an odd one. So my question is, what happens? if neither sine to the m n of x or cosine m of x have n or m odd. So what I'm really trying to just say is what happens if both of them are even? Um, so let's do an example of that. Let's do the integral from 0 to pi of sine squared x dx. So now we don't really have that trick where we can remove one of them and then turn the rest into the other trig function. Because if I just did this is 1 minus cosine squared, I'm stuck. I still can't do a u substitution. But I have this reduction formula here. So if you see integrals where there's only even powers, so if you have even powers, for sine and cosine, you want to use the reduction formulas. And I'm going to be honest with you. These are my least favorite type of problems out of all these trig integral problems. The reduction ones are just so annoying. <laughs> but you have to do it. This is, this is the way to do it. So I'm just warning you, I don't like these that much. But you have to use one of these two formulas to reduce it. 
And luckily, since 2 is a very small even power, it's not so bad. So sine squared, if you use my formula, this is equal to 1 half minus cosine of 2x over 2 dx. And now individually, these two things are not so bad to integrate. So the integral of 1 half is 1 half x. The integral of cosine is sine. However, because there's this 2 in here, chain, will chain rule would produce a 2 if you took the derivative. So I need to put a factor of 2 on the bottom to counteract that. However, there's already a 2 right here. So if I join it with an another 2 down there, that's a 4. And if you want to check your work, take the derivative, and the 2 will come out front, and you'll get back to where you started again. So this, oh, <laughs> not plus c, right? Because if you notice with this one, I have bounds. This is a definite integral. So I'm going to plug in pi, and I'm going to plug in 0. So if you plug in pi, you get 1 half pi. But if you plug in pi into sine, or if you plug in 0 into sine here, you get 2 pi or 0. These both go to 0. If you plug 0 into here, you just get 0 as well. So you really just get 1 half pi once you plug those in and subtract. OK, there's one other weird type of integral for sine and cosine that comes up. And it involves these guys right here that I haven't talked about. So let's, let me show you one of those. It's not so bad. I think the bad part is memorizing <laughs> like these formulas. Otherwise, it's not so bad. So we're going to do this example. It's the integral of sine 4x cosine of 5x dx. So again, the hard part is, do you have the formulas memorized? Um, have you made flashcards? <laughs> you should probably start making flashcards. Um, so for these three, I just need to match it with the correct one. So I'm dealing with a sine cosine integral. So of these three, we want the first one, because this is a sine cosine integral. So th this is directly equal to 1 half. So I'm reading the first line. Sine of, and this is my a and this is my b. 4x is a and um, 5x is b. So you subtract them first, and you would get minus x. Then the formula says it's plus, and you have sine of, and then you add them together. So um, it's pretty forgiving. You could add numbers in any order. So you could even have mixed up the formula a little bit, and you'd still get something equivalent, right? Um, don't let that try to save you, though. <laughs> Please memorize the formulas. If you add them together, you get 9x. Ooh, let me take this moment to remind you of something. Sine is an odd function. I want to remind you of this. I left off on this as the last lecture of my class, but you might not have taken my class last semester. What, what I'm trying to say is that if you have negative x for sine, this is equal to taking that negative sign and bringing it out front. So because sine is an odd function, that means sine of negative x equals negative sine x. So I'm just reminding you that. So for here, I'm going to actually say that sine of negative x is negative sine x plus sine of 9x dx. Now I'm going to integrate each of these separately, and it's not so bad because it's to the first power. Integral of sine is cosine. So, or negative sine. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Integral of sine is a negative cosine, but you have this negative in front of it. So this is going to be cosine of x. If what I did just completely blew you off, let's just like, take a second. Breathe. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so we're good. Like I, It works. This one, if I go backwards, I get negative cosine of 9x, but I need to divide by 9 because chain rule would have given me the 9 in front. OK, and there's my answer to that. I think we could do another one. I think we could do one more problem. Mm, however, I've run out of board space. Very frustrating. Um, what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to leave you with a problem. And you're going to be a good student. You're going to try this problem on your own, and then you're going to go to my next video. So here is a problem. <laughs> OK. So I want you to integrate. And you're going to be like, what the heck? This is, looks nothing like what we just did. But it kind of is. So you're going to integrate tangent. You've probably turned the video off by now because I just said tangent. So tangent to the sixth c 
secant to the fourth dx. What I want you to do is I want you to try to get the answer to this. Now, these two are kind of a pair because if you look at the second formula I have here, tangent squared and secant squared are related. So like those two get paired together, just like the first formula um, pairs sine and cosines together. So basically what I'm asking you to do is to try to do the same thing where you like manipulate it and make a u substitution to get it to work out nicely. So play with it for a second, more maybe more than a second. See if you can get the answer to this. You probably want to recall that the derivative of tangent is secant squared. And then another one that we, we know is that the derivative of secant is secant tangent. So those might be helpful when you're doing a u sub. So I'm going to challenge you. You're in calculus too. You can do this. So try the problem. Uh, I will be back shortly in lecture video four. Thanks for watching.